Hello there, my friends. It's story time today. It's December 2nd, 2021. And on December 2nd, I love to tell this story. Now, no, it's not the Battle of Austerlitz, although that did happen on December 2nd of 1805. But you probably know that if you're tuned into this video and you know a little bit about Napoleon. You probably also know that on December 2nd, 1804, one year before that, he was crowned emperor at Notre Dame Cathedral. No, this happened after. I'm going to read you a, a very short section of Alan Sholmes' Napoleon Bonaparte biography. And uh, I highly recommend this book. Please pick it up. And uh, it, just a wonderful writer, as you will see. Chapter 25, The Marches of Empire. Napoleon's return from Austerlitz had been triumphant. As he traversed the German states crossing the Rhine, church bells rang as he passed beneath a long series of triumphal arches of flowers in one city after another. The people of Paris cheered even more loudly, giving balls and elegant dinners for this man who, only a few weeks earlier, had been thought to be finished, and with him his tinsel empire. As a part of these celebrations, imperial master of the hunt, Marshal Berthier, or Berthier, gave hunting parties for Napoleon, including one of his Corsican favorites, a rabbit hunt. Berthier, who personally preferred stag, had gone to considerable trouble to buy approximately 1,000, quote, hares, unquote. On the day of the hunt, all was in readiness, the rabbits in massive cages along the wooded sides of an open field. As several carriages finally appeared, Napoleon and his staff soon emerging in full hunting regalia. As Napoleon walked across the field, the signal was given to release the rabbits, and hundreds upon hundreds of black and white rabbits leapt forward, enjoying their new freedom. But as the intrepid hunters prepared to go in for the kill, the animals, instead of fleeing in opposite directions, perversely turned straight for the hunters, coming at them in magnificent bounds. At first, Napoleon could not believe his eyes, nor could anyone else, laughing at the comic absurdity of the whole thing. But laughter soon gave way to perplexity, and perplexity to concern, as the hundreds of animals continued to head directly for Napoleon. Finally, a bit anxious himself, he turned and ordered those around him, even the coachmen and postilions, to grab sticks and chase away the insolent animals, now poking fun at the emperor's reputation as a distinguished huntsman. But all to no avail. They swarmed around Napoleon, entwining themselves between his legs, even leaping into his arms. He tried beating them off with his riding crop, but more arrived at last his aides-de-camp and coachman came to his rescue and got him back safely to his carriage, though it too was quickly besieged. It had been a narrow escape. A furious Berthier, humiliated by the absurd event, learned only afterward that his men, instead of trapping hares, had purchased a thousand tame rabbits due to be used for pâté from farmers. And the mighty victor of Austerlitz, who had soundly defeated a combined force of 85,000 Russian and Austrian troops armed with cannon, muskets, and sabers, had now ignominiously scurried off another battlefield pursued by a thousand unarmed rabbits who had mistaken him for the kindly man who was due to give them their daily feed. You can't make this stuff up, folks. <laughs> Have a great day. Enjoy your Austerlitz day. Live like an emperor.